In this week's release from the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation for, on our analysis of COVID data and forecasts, I think first key observation is that uh, all the global numbers continue to improve, daily estimated infections, reported cases, uh, hospitalizations, and reported deaths. That global improvement um, does mask that some countries are still in uh, seeing their Delta surges unfold. There are two blocks, uh, northern states in the US and many of the provinces in Canada are one block where transmission is still increasing. There's a big block of increasing transmission in Central and Eastern Europe right through to the sort of second Delta surge in the Russian Federation. And then we have smaller blocks of countries uh, in other parts of the world. So Syria and Egypt are going up quite considerably. In Sub-Saharan Africa, we see Angola and Equatorial Guinea um, also going up rapidly. And in Southeast Asia, uh, Laos and Cambodia are seeing numbers and transmission increasing. So pockets around the world, uh, but generally this backdrop that the main global impact of Delta is now receding. And in our forecasts, as we look ahead, uh, we have this driver of bringing down numbers, which is the Delta surges uh, coming down because they're running out of people to infect, either because of natural infection or because of vaccination. And those two uh, processes keep going, bring the numbers down globally uh, right through, we believe, October. But in November and December, because of winter seasonality in the Northern Hemisphere, we expect that uh, decline to stop and numbers to start going back up again. Now, if you look at the numbers that we forecast in our reference scenario out to the end of the year, that increase in the winter in the Northern Hemisphere will be much smaller than last year. We expect uh, maybe nearly as many infections, uh, maybe as many reported cases or even more because the infection detection rate is higher than it used to be. But in terms of hospitalization and death, much smaller than uh, last winter. Hospital systems, however, in the Northern Hemisphere may be under just as severe stress because of the combined impact of flu, which we expect will be considerable this year, along with moderate levels of demand for hospitalization and ICU beds for COVID. So unfortunately, healthcare workers and healthcare systems in the Northern Hemisphere may not uh, see a winter that is better than last year. Intervention strategies uh, and individual behavioral choice can make a big difference to that because in our scenario where mask use goes back up to a high level, uh, you could see a, you know, basically remove most of the impact of a winter surge in the Northern Hemisphere. Now, one of the things that uh, we are often asked about is uh, how, what is the prospects uh, for a new variant? And if you want to put it in very simple, uh, rough numbers, we've had just over 2 billion infections uh, with COVID so far. And that has led to four major variants that have had an impact at the population level uh, using WHO's nomenclature, alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. Meaning very roughly about one major new variant uh, with population level impact per 500 million infections. The last major variant to emerge, Delta, was um, very likely uh, quite a bit more than six months ago. And in that intervening time, there's been many infections uh, at the global level, well over 500 million. So uh, in some sense, if you want to take those very rough numbers, you would think that during this period of time, perhaps a new variant has emerged and we just haven't seen it uh, have a, a population impact yet. or there, there's the prospect for new variants to come. Now, mutations and the emergence of variants and the spread of them is an incredibly um, random stochastic event. So we just have no idea when and if a new variant will come. If one emerges with considerable immune escape, then of course there would be billions of people who would be available to be infected and pass on the infection and we would, should expect a major surge uh, like we've seen for Delta around the world. 
that is very much going to be a function, especially as vaccination rates keep going up, and we hope will continue going up, uh, that that will be very much a function of whether a new variant has, you know, considerable immune escape. That is, they can infect individuals previously infected uh, or uh, vaccinated. And so that question about immune escape and waning immunity from natural infection and waning immunity from vaccination will be critical to what may unfold uh, if and when new variants emerge. So those are the main highlights from this week's analysis around uh, COVID.